guys ready to praise the Lord? The Bible says, ascribe unto the Lord, or give to the Lord all the glory, all the honor that's due His name. So I'm going to give you permission to just get a little bit loose. All right? Come on. We love you, God. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy Never be patient. 
your hands. <laughs> it's so good to declare the wonderful works of God. You are good, God. All the time. I want you to think of a time when he hasn't been good. You can't. <laughs> because he's always good. Oh, I remind my soul that he's good, he's good, he's good. And Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing straight to his heart. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. One more time. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing to his heart. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. To the King of Kings we sing. Lord, you are God and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, lift your voice. Lord, you are God and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are God. Lord, you are God and your mercy endureth forever. And so we Sing it again. 
brighter morning star. Look into his eyes, sing it again, bright and morning star.
do it all together. I believe God is releasing a, a teaching. I believe he's releasing a fresh praise in the earth. Because something always happened when a group of people exalted Jesus in the Bible. Am, am I right? Am I in the book? So I just want to do something. I, I promise you're going to Little 
praise you, God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, God. You are worthy of our praise. So we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we honor your presence in this place tonight. God, we're asking for you to come and do what only you can do tonight. By the power of your spirit, God, would you come and do the unthinkable tonight? We worship you. Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord for his presence? Thank you. Praise. Amen. Wow. What a privilege we have to come and encounter God together. Praise God. Apparently, I'm the only one excited about that. Amen. There we go. All right. So, welcome, everybody. We are so excited to have you here. We have a few quick announcements, and then we'll go ahead and get on with the night. So, we've got some upcoming encounter nights, if we can get that slide up. Maybe. There we go. Praise the Lord. So, go ahead. Pull out your phone. Take a picture. Here are your upcoming encounter nights. We got April 10th, 24th, May 8th and 22nd, June 5th, June 26th, and July 10th. So we're going to be continuing through up until the beginning of July, and we're going to see the Lord continue to move in this place. Also, how many of you love encounter services? <laughs> Praise God. Show, raise your hands if you love encounter services. Praise the Lord. All right, so Mary, if you can take track of all the people who just raised your hands. So we, we cannot do this without our volunteers. And how many of you know that Jesus came to serve and not be served? So if you want to be like Jesus on Wednesday nights, after this service, when you leave, off to the left-hand side, there's a nice red banner, volunteer station. Go ahead and sign up over there because we want to continue to raise up an army so that we can flow with the Lord every Wednesday to be able to provide this for everybody. So all you people who just raised your hands, you ratted yourselves out. We got security footage. We see you. We'll find you. Praise God. All right. So if you have little ones with you, 12 and younger, we do have LC Kids available for you. So if you have kids, you can still go ahead and run them over there, take them there. But it's an amazing opportunity. I've gotten to see the curriculum, and they learn the exact same things that we're learning in here. Because there is no junior Holy Spirit. And it's absolutely wonderful. Because kids have no filter. So raise them up in the ways of the Lord. It's going to be raising up a little army. It's awesome. Okay. Also, we do have LCU preview next week. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a free event. So if you're interested in learning more about LCU, you can go ahead, go on to the website, lifestylechristianityu.com, or you can sign up for our Equip for Purpose, which is happening at the same time. So during the LCU school day, you can come and be equipped by Dan and Todd and then be sent out for love and action. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead, 
sign up with that QR code. It is next week. Doors will open at about 8 o'clock. We'll have worship. We'll have our sessions. And then you guys will go out on outreach together. Praise God. All right. Our last one that we have. Our power and love. Fort Worth power and love. Who's excited? (laughs) Praise God. It's an amazing opportunity to just join with the body of Christ and just see a whole city transformed by the love of Jesus. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and register for it. It is April 12th and 13th. It is going to be a powerful weekend. We're going to have Todd. We're going to have Peter Lewis, Upper Room. It's going to be glorious. And we're going to see the Lord move like never before. So who's excited for power and love? Praise God. Amen. All right. Can I invite Todd and Destiny up? Come on up. Yeah, she needs that. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for coming. It's been a long time since I've seen you, and I'm so happy. Um, I brought it. I brought a couple people with me. Listen, these. They are right now, they are rehearsing. I stole all these people from rehearsal. I stole my daughter that's running that thing. They're rehearsing Beloved right now. And we're going to have this amazing performance. I'm telling you, if you've never seen it, come. If you have seen it, come again. Bring people that don't know Jesus. This is absolutely the most incredible performance. I, I am so undone, like four, four or five times. I, cry so bad but four times they're doing it so Des is running this I want her to just share her heart because I stole her rehearsal time for this so hi guys I'm Destiny as he has said I run Forerunners for the Arts it's a performing arts training center here in the here in the building (laughs) okay Lord (laughs) and um, we're doing Beloved Easter production which is next weekend so it's from Friday to Sunday in the morning. And this is some of our amazing cast that I wanted you guys to see. The rest of them are over there actively rehearsing right now, but this is the story of Jesus. And we start at creation and we go all the way through Pentecost. And it's really an opportunity for people to see the Bible come to life and for people to see that Jesus is for them. Because once you see that, there's no excuse and you have to step into full surrender. So this is for people that are not saved, This is for people that are saved. I encounter the Lord every single year in rehearsals, in filming, in tech week, in the shows. It's not just for the unsaved. We want you guys to come. It's free. Bring your family. Um, I don't even know fully how to put it into words, but it's fully immersive. We have acting. We have dance. We have video narration. We got to film actually at the sets where The Chosen has filmed. And we just got back from that. Was that last weekend? It's a blur. Yet they're like... It was two weekends ago, Um, and we're just so excited. We're preparing tonight on the other side and just pressing in and believing that the Lord's going to bring the right people in, but we need you guys' help, so we'd love for you guys to come and to bring your families, and if you're on outreach, just bring in everybody, okay? It's a free show. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. (laughs) But it costs Jesus everything. Here's your QR, the QR code is, that's your ticket link, so if you'd like to come, We are asking for you to reserve tickets just so we can be prepared for you. Uh, We do have a quick video that we'd love for you guys to watch. Yeah, roll that video. Thank you. Amen. So good. Oh my gosh. Are you guys happy? Come on, just agree with God because he's not in a bad mood. He's very, very excited. Are you guys happy? Are you filled with joy? 
All right, we're about to see. Amen? Awesome? Yes. All right. Well, I know that we have a few testimonies to share tonight. So we want to share them if we could. Yes. Come on. So good. Hello, everyone. So I just want to actually share how simple it is to share the gospel. So my husband Ubers, and he was just, he Ubered this one girl twice in like one week or so. So the second time, they were talking about fart jokes. And um, after... Stop. <laughs> did you say fart? I did. Okay. Because like we're that. real. Like everybody does okay, it. go ahead. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, so as he was dropping her off, he was like, hey, all fart jokes aside, and did you know that Jesus really loves you? And she, um, she was like, yeah, that's what people say. And he was like, well, can I pray for you? And so he started praying over her and she started weeping. And he got her number and gave it to me and I reached out to her. Just messaged her a few times. was like, hey, would you like to come to the journey? There's this thing Thursday nights here that's so incredible. If anyone needs Jesus, bring them. And so after a few weeks, she said, okay, I'll come. And so I brought her. And on the way here, I saw... She was saying how much anxiety and suicidal thoughts she has. And I was like, you know, tonight you're going to encounter so many people that just love the Lord and God can completely wipe that out. And so she came and she walked in and you could tell like she was so, she's not around a lot of people. She said, I never had a friend. You're my first friend. Oh, and, man, that's awesome. And so um, she was apologizing all the time and she was just so uptight. And then they, were, they shared the gospel and they asked if anyone wants to give their life to Jesus. And she said, yes. So That's she gave so her good. life to Jesus. So good. And um, she decided to get water <clears throat> baptized. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. So the same day, she says yes to Jesus. She gets water baptized and she gets filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. <laughs> But that's not it. Amen. Amen. Okay, so she gets out of the water, and she was wearing eyeglasses, but she had taken them off and was kind of stumbling in the water to see. And so we're like, hey, we want And she gets up out of the water and was like, oh, like you could tell she could see a little better. So we're like, we want to pray for you. And so the pastors prayed over her, over her eyes, and we would stand towards the back and hold up one finger. And she was like, yeah, I can see that. And, uh, but not super clear. So we prayed again and stood back further until we were like almost back to the doors there, holding up two fingers and she could see it. Come on. Man, that's awesome. Yes, and all just from my husband saying, hey, did you know Jesus loves you? In the middle of fart jokes. Yes. Like Jesus can't do anything. Just reach out and just say, Hey, did you know Jesus loves you? It's so easy. That's Just so, do it. Because man, there's so awesome. many people that need to hear about Jesus. We are the solution because Jesus lives on the inside of us. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So good. My Jesus God. Is. This is incredible. <laughs> this is like, you don't understand all my life in Christ, I've been waiting for this. To where people would come up and be bold because they're sharing their faith everywhere they go. This is the gospel, guys. We all get to do this, right? Come on. Let's do it. So good. So, Sherry, I'm your one. Woo! She said, she said she's in year one. You got to hold it up close. Yes, I'm in year one. And those people screaming are all my fellow students. <laughs> know my shyness. They know I've been so timid this whole time. I'm so and proud of you. I'm, here. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. We love you. You don't have to be shy. You have a lion inside of you. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know what's cool about a lion? All you do is open up the cage. Yes. <laughs> it's it. So why, right now what you're doing is you're opening the door. You're just like, and how do you face your, how do you get over fear? Well, you, I just turn from it. You it's kick, it in, the, you kick it in the face. You <laughs> kick fear. Right now you're doing it. Look, yeah. when's the last time you drop kicked on a stage? No, no. Hey. It's so true. With top bite. You're doing so good. Um, so proud of you. Yeah, thank also. you. Yep. So every time I, in the last week, I think every time that I've, um, 
deciding to turn from fear and I kind of stomp on it. So good. It. Yes. And I turn to Jesus. It's like I keep thinking of like Popeye with his can of spinach. And like the faith gets weaker. And I mean, the fear gets weaker and my faith gets stronger. That's so good. And, oh my gosh, that's good. You're a well, preacher. You are, you are a preacher. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. You're a preacher. I, I promise you. They think, they think you are. Amen. Tell us what happened. So um, at my workplace last night, um, they all know that I go here. I'm not that shy. I mean, I, you know, I talk about That's that. That's awesome. Um, but we were cashiering together, Sally and I, and she said she had been in the hospital recently. And I said, well, I hope it wasn't serious. And she said it is. She said she has a, a blood clot on her lung. Come on. And she could die at any time. So I asked her if I could pray for her. So I was done work and I clocked out and we went out front of the store and I prayed for the clot to go. Amen. And I prayed for healing. And I actually, for the first time, really shared the gospel. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did, how did it feel to be able to share your love for Jesus? It felt so good because I could hear him. Like, what he was saying. It wasn't even me. It was like, if, if you just agree with him, you open your mouth. He feels it. That's the he real you. The this is the real you. This is the real you. See, see what's happening is all these lies are leaving and truth is landing. And now you're ministering on a truth and no one can stop you. The devil can't because he's been defeated. And he's a liar. And now you know the truth. So what did she say? Um, so she said that she does know Jesus. Um, and I just kind of shared with her because she has this thing in her lungs right now yeah. that I'm believing in faith that's going to go away. Yeah. But I just kind of shared with her, you know, we really never know when, when our last day is going to be. And are you right with God? And um, the Bible says that we have to be born of the Spirit. And so I, was, I can't remember everything. No, no, I, you're doing really 20, good. 20 minutes we talked wow. to each other. And I invited her to come tonight and she did have to work. That's but I'm going to keep inviting her. No, that's to okay. What did she say when you told her that you need to be born of the Spirit? Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly. Okay. But um, she did say that she believed. She said, I know I'm, I'm your sister. Amen. So, Amen. So you know what the Bible also says? It says, whatever we ask in prayer, mm -hmm. believing, yes. we'll have it. Yes. It says that if wherever two or three of you are, yes. I'm in your midst. When we gather together, it says whatever two of us agree on touching, yeah. we'll have it. So I believe and agree mm -hmm. that her lungs are being healed. So here. Now watch. Now watch. If two, if two can do this, what can all these people that join in faith do? Yes, yes. Amen. She has a scan on Friday morning. Okay. So what, what's her name? Sally. Sally. So Jesus, we join our faith with this courageous lioness. We thank you, Father, for this preacher of the gospel. We thank you, Father, for this fearless woman of God in front of us. We join our faith with her. And we speak to this mountain. And the Bible says we speak to the mountain and the mountain will move. So, God, we speak to this clot in her lungs and we command it to leave now. In Jesus' name, you will harm her not. At the scan, you will be gone. Father, I thank you that the doctors see it's confirmed medically absolutely zero blood clot. I thank you so much that this lady is completely healed. We love you. We give you glory. And I thank you for the fresh boldness in this one. Thank you, Lord. She's going to be like a lioness. And you know the lions are kind of lazy because the lionesses are the ones that do the hunting. Uh, amen? Amen. Good job. Amen. Great job. Yeah. Amen. I got two, but they told me I have 90 seconds, so I have yeah, to well, pick one. 
Yes. Um, so yesterday, a whole bunch of the dancers, there's a dancers, and they went out to South Lake uh, where the fountain is, and yeah. they were dancing around there and doing a dance, and um, they asked some of us who love and action people to go with them, so we were going to, hey, come on to the center of the, you know, there's a little act going on in here, just rally people in to the center of the stage and what was going on in there. And, so we were doing that and just loving on people and they were, some people were watching and as I turned, uh, to, I noticed this guy and the Holy Spirit highlighted him. He was really into what Megan was sharing, the dancing had ended and she was sharing her testimony, a little bit of the gospel and he was staring at her. And I, the one guy that was with us, I said, go over and talk to him because I could see that he was really engaged and he, he walked over to talk to him. And he said, uh, I said, I did too. And I said, hi, what's your name? And he said his name. And he said, I can't believe that you guys are all here because I've been coming here and, and praying that evangelists would come to this place <laughs> and do exactly what you're doing. And so we asked him his story and really quick, his name was, I can't say his name, but because he said not to, but he's, what, what the Lord had told him was, um, your name is no longer that. I'm now calling you Abraham, and are you willing to give up your Isaac? So a year ago, he had this massive encounter with the Lord, where the Lord encountered him in New York. And so he was Jewish, and he was from Is I mean Israel Jewish. He was Israeli, but from I'm trying to hurry. He was okay. is from Israel, and yeah. so anyway. He was so excited, and we prayed for him because he had neuropathy. So he had this massive encounter, and he said, oh, you guys are from LCU. He goes, well, I've been to one encounter night. And so I wanted to come up here and show that because he said he might come tonight. So I don't know if you're here, you want to stand up, or if you want to be recognized, that's fine and not. But we invited him tonight. We prayed for his neuropathy to go. The Holy Spirit fell on him. I am standing in agreement that he got healed. He got radically touched by the Lord. And so he said he was actually interested in coming to check out some of the things at LCU and was really interested in coming. So it was a really incredible story. Let's pretend like someone else just came out and they're going to share another testimony. Go ahead. Okay, this one is really okay. good. Yeah. Ready? Can I do yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I was, <laughs> this is a really Look, cool. Look, listen, I, I, want you to, I want you to see something. When you start to step out, now she's been stepping out for a while. But when you start to step out and you see something, just like the last one we just heard, the, oh my gosh, I did it for the first time. Once you step into this, you realize this is why you're here. She mentioned something. She mentioned that the man had been praying for evangelists to do what you're doing. We're, all the people that go out and love in action aren't evangelists. Right. We're full-time Christians. Yeah. You've got to break that mindset off of people because if you're not an evangelist, you won't stop for the one. And that's just not it. You just need to know who's your neighbor. Guys, it's so important. Okay, go ahead before I cry. Go ahead. That's so true. And I do want to say that because my first year, I'm a third year intern. My first year here, I am the one that left. I never went on Love in Action. I left. I didn't, I'm like, they can't make me. What are they talking about? Are you rebellious? <laughs> I did. Amazing woman on fire. I did. I did. I was like, oh, I'll just go get in the closet. I'm going to use this. To, anyway. So I wasn't always this woman. The Lord has radically changed me so Woo. much so into this next testimony. What happened? How did it happen? How did you get changed from not wanting to go, just go into your closet, to I got to do this? Well, when I came to school here, I, I don't even know if you know this, that I, I we had a first. Oh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm bracing myself. What's coming? We had a fire tunnel. Yeah. And I didn't even know what that was. I thought that was arrogant of leadership to call it that. I thought, why are they not calling it a prayer tunnel? Oh, I love it when Jesus prayer. shows up like this. <laughs> Because they're like, this is arrogant. I don't believe this. And all of a sudden, hey. So, and honestly, okay, here we go, Todd. I was like in the fire tunnel going, if Todd White puts his hands on me. See, I, my motivation for coming was all wrong. It was Todd White. It yeah. wasn't God. Come on. But I got like three people and then this cute little lady named Miss Mary put her hand on me. <laughs> Did she talk like a South African? <laughs> yeah, she Miss yes, Mary. <laughs> Yeah. And my right hand and left hand went snap. I can't believe I'm doing this on stage. My right hand and left hand went snap. My head snapped and I went, ah, 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 and I had no grid for what was happening. None. None. <laughs> the girl goes, she's going down. She can't walk. I'm like, eh, and I had no clue. I'd never heard of demons or angels. <laughs> they pulled me out. They put me on the floor. It was right over there by where Katie's sitting. And d the Lord spoke to me in a whirlwind. <laughs> literally above my head in a whirlwind. And this is what he said to me. You came for all the wrong reasons. Nobody needs to lay their hands on you. And I can use a flea to do my work, daughter, and don't you forget it. Now, and I am crying 
And it's like a, I didn't know this word at the time, but I now know it was like a Selah moment. And then he said, I'm going to teach you um, a, a walk where your right foot goes father and your left foot goes daughter. And your right foot goes father and your left foot goes daughter. And he has. Ooh. He has. He has. And it's been so beautiful. He has. He has taught me that. And many times I walk into this building going, father, daughter, father, daughter, father, daughter, father, daughter. I do. I that's do. awesome. Yeah. That's my, my time is up. It's okay. Finish the testimony. Do you remember where you were? That we're done, I think. We're done. We, we, got, let, we got people yeah. that need to speak. So, so good. I'm thank so, you, guys. So, so if thankful. you're thinking about coming to school, I'm not kidding you. It has wrecked and changed my life. I am on life, in love on fire for Jesus Christ. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. I have one lover in my heart and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. I Amen. have died to self. Amen. And dying more. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Proud of you. Amen. So good. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Woo. <laughs> All right, can I have that? Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Oh, I feel like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. I can't stop crying. I was in the back trying to talk to Will, and I'm like, he goes, you okay, buddy? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. I either laugh or cry. God's so good. Guys, he's so good. He's so good. I want to I wanna share a couple things with you real quick. Uh, could you go with me to, oh, my gosh. Ah, did you go with me to Ephesians 4? Oh my gosh. Jesus, help me. You might, I. My heart is gripped with people getting it. You know, I, I love praying for people. I love it. I, I do it every day, everywhere I go. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to live it. But I love to see somebody. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I told you I was in an elevator. I think I was in Brazil. And I got in, and I'm about ready to share the gospel. And this kid goes, hey, do you know how much Jesus loves you? To me. I went, tell me, dude. And he starts to share his heart with me. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like, and he kept going. He goes, I just got saved just a, a, you know, a, a few months ago. But man, I'm on fire. You need to know he loves you. And I go, thank you, man. And I was so overwhelmed. I didn't tell him anything. I said, I love Jesus. Thank you for sharing. He goes, oh, I see it on your shirt. Man, who are you? And I'm like, just so Christian, dude. I love God. He's like, so good to meet you, man. Gives me a big hug. He's full of like work like he has dust all over him he's working and he's sharing the gospel at his job and I was so overwhelmed I'm like I'm gonna tell you right now that in 19 years that's the first person that has ever approached me with the gospel in any place I've ever been ever and I'm like God at least one did it and I know that's what we're doing here and it's so important I, you know when you work one of, the, one of the greatest things that we can possibly do at work is share the gospel. Are you guys with me? I mean, wouldn't you like to be able to share your faith at work and never ever be ashamed, never be shy? Just always have the word of the Lord for whoever you're in front of. Do you know that God wants to give you the word of the Lord for everyone you're in front of? Do you know that he knows everything about everybody that you see? Like everybody you're in front of, he knows everything about them from before they were born. I mean, he knows, every, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows it all. And when you actually get into relationship with God as your father, he wants to share those things with you because it's, it's the key to their heart. And I, you know, I learned this at my job and, and it was so important for me to be able to have my job when I first got saved because I, I, I never worked. And a lot of you know the testimony, but I never, I didn't care about work. I'm like work, whatever, I don't need it. And when I worked, I wanted money for drugs. So now I'm working and I'm like, I'm going to do this under the Lord. And Colossians 3.17, whatever I do, in word or deed, do it as under the Lord. And I'm like a robot. But I had a couple of scriptures in my heart and I was going to live on them. I was going to live them no matter what. And one of them was work. And there was another scripture that I, that I, that I saw. 
and it's in Ephesians here, because what I did was I stole, like I used to steal. I stole all our money, put us through bankruptcy. You guys, I mean, I, I'm kind of sharing it again, but I was a thief. And so the enemy is this thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You guys know that. John 10, 10, right? Jesus came to give us life. So now I'm working and doing my job as under the Lord, and I'm excited because I know why I'm working. Do you guys know why you work? Do you know why you work? Listen, how many hours do we work? Some people work 40. Anybody work 60? Anybody work 70? My staff's raising their hands. It's not good. <laughs> Ministry doesn't count. Okay. But, but as, a, as a, I'm serious. As a, now watch, I want you to think with me because where is most of your time spent during the week? Work. It's like you're everything. Like why do we work? Why do you work? Someone tell me why you work. Why? Say it again. Save the world. That's right. Why else do you work? Let's, let's just do a basic why do we work? To pay the bills. If you don't work, you don't pay the bills. If you don't pay the bills, you don't live somewhere. Are you with me? So we got to work to pay the bills. So I never paid bills and I didn't care about bills and I never earned money to pay bills. But when I got saved, I got so radically changed inside that I saw this scripture and I want you to see it. Look at this right here. It talks, about, it talks about putting away lying. Let each of you speak truth to his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be angry, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down in your wrath nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer because I used to steal. Like it was a big deal. Like I'm not a thief anymore. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna provide. And it was an honor for me to hand my wife my first paycheck because she never saw one for nine years when we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Then after we got saved, this thing hit me and like her mom was waiting because I never worked before. Her mom was waiting to see if this Jesus thing was real. So I went and got a job, which freaked her mom out. But then I was praying for everybody. So she still thought I was a psychopath praying for everybody. And then my wife would call her because she was upset that I was praying for everybody. And her mom would say, see, see what you did. You threw your whole life away. Like, but the truth is this, when I work, this is why we work. I want you to read this with me. Look at number, verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands. Why? Working with his hands, what is good? Why? No, no, yeah, there's another part to this first that I think the, the devil hides from us. I think sometimes we think that God's after our tithe. You know, we, we talk about the tithe and it says that why have you robbed me? You know, in, in Malachi. <laughs> Malachi 3 talks about why have you robbed me? You haven't brought the tithe and you haven't brought the offering. But I want you to understand that, that when we come into the kingdom, when we get born again, we exit law and we enter grace. So watch, God loves you even if you don't give. When you don't give, you hurt you, not God. God doesn't need your stuff. I mean, he has plenty. Why do we work? We work so that we might have something to, here's the problem. What we do is we work so much and we, 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 we get bills and we have all these different things that we gotta do and what we do is we pay that and if we have enough at the end, we tip God. Okay, I know none of you do that, but I'm, maybe someone in here, we tip God. We, we keep what we need and what we have. And then if we have any left over, then we tip God. Are you guys hearing me? This is like craziness. Because when I got saved, I was like, I'm working to give. And now my wife didn't understand that because I'd stolen everything. So when the offering basket came around, like, I'm like, we need to do 10%. She goes, what? Because she didn't see it. She goes, we will give $5. You will be quiet. You've never given this family a paycheck. Don't even talk like that. It wasn't like she was being mean, but I ripped us off the whole time. So she never saw a paycheck. Now she sees a paycheck and I'm ready. Let's do 10%. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now keep in mind, I'm the thief that stole no longer. Let a man work with his hands so he has something to give. If this hits your heart, it'll change your life. If it doesn't hit your heart, you will always have money be God instead of God be God. This is the hardest thing to talk about. You know, yesterday I, I was sharing at LCU. I was just out. Do you guys know who Andrew Womack is? I was just out with him last week and I was so convicted. I'm like, 
oh my gosh, like look at this man. Look at the generosity that he carries. Look at the ministry. Look at the truth that he preaches. Look at the understanding that he has of scripture. He said this statement to me. He said, you know, since I was born, I have never ever had one dollar bill come through my pocket that I haven't paid a tithe on. He said, since I was a baby, well, he was taught legalistically that if you don't tithe, God's coming after you. You're under curse. No, Jesus became the curse. So you're not tithing because you're going to be cursed if you don't. Are you understand? There's a grace that God brings to us that it's not about we have to. Grace allows us that we get to. You don't have to. You get to. But the problem is, is that we, we feel weird because you know what? We don't have enough as it is. God doesn't want what's left. He wants what's first. And I'm not saying that for your tithe because we're not your church. So we're safe. But I'm telling you that the reason why we work is we work so that we have something to give. How many of you, no, don't answer. Um, I wonder how many people have really tested God in this one place. He said, and see if I don't open up and pour out You know what it says? It says anybody that gives up land, that anybody that gives up houses in this life for me, he will, it will be abundance overflowing will men give into his bosom. And it says you will have this a hundredfold with persecutions because persecutions come with it. You talk about money and you think you've ever seen persecution. You talk about that. See, when you touch people's God, you touch serious issues. You hear how quiet it is? I don't have a, whoo, brother, hallelujah. I got a, it's the, it's the place that we hurt the most because we're not used to radically gener- being radically generous. But radical generosity is everything. That's what we want. All right. It says, let a man work with his hands so that we got something to give. I got one more thing I want to share with you. I want you to go to 1 Kings 17. This is the part when no one looks in their Bible. When you talk about money, we're like, oh, geez. Yesterday morning, I'm in my prayer room and I'm, I'm like preparing. I'm just want to, I'm being with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit says this to me. He says, Todd, I'm holding you responsible. I'm like, I want to be responsible. He said, I'm holding you responsible for neglecting to teach the body of Christ about giving because you fear what men think. Now, I don't walk in the fear of men. I don't, but I do here. I did. Why? Because I get accused of all kinds of things. Prosperity preacher, heretic, all this other stuff. The, the thing that bothered me the most was prosperity preacher. Because I don't just talk about money. You know, God, do you know that God wants you to prosper? Do you know that? Do you believe that? Do you think God wants you to be in poverty? Do you think God wants you to be poor? Do you think God wants you to have nothing? Do you know what the key to prosperity is? Giving. Because if God can get money through you, he will give money to you. Why? Because he gives seed to the, come on, and bread to the eater. It's so important that we sow our seed and not eat our seed. The more you give, the more God blesses you. Why? Why does God bless people like that? Because he knows that money doesn't have you and he does. (laughs) <laughs> this is so important I learned, I learned this right away in my Christian life I wanted to give and man, it was a struggle for my wife and then we pushed it and we pushed it a little more and then I really I always I, we just pushed it I pushed it a lot a lot it says if you can't be faithful in unrighteous mammon who will trust you with heavenly riches are you with me and I can share that parable I don't have time But I want you to understand that if we can't be trusted in, what is unrighteous mammon? Money that's been used for everything else but God. How do I, how do I set up for myself treasures in heaven? How? I sow into people, I see transformation, I see people there. How do I lay up for myself treasures in heaven? I'm pouring myself into the gospel so that I can see heaven populated and hell empty. 
How do we do this? What happens at LCU? We pour into students so that they can be transformed. So that, so that people can come up and share like this. This was not an act, not a put on. They weren't told what to say. This is real. And I could ask LCU students all over the room to stand if their life has been changed. And I'm telling you, it is. But transformers, tra people that are transformed, transform. And it's so important that we would equip the next generation to run. Okay, one more thing. Sorry. Like, he's really talking a long time. I am. All right. Okay, in the Old Testament, Elijah prophesied to King Ahab that a drought was coming. He fled to the desert to hide, and then King Ahab was persecuting God's prophets. He was killing God's prophets. They were hunting him down. So Elijah had to run for his life. So initially, God sent ravens to feed him at a brook. So the bird that God cursed, actually, that was cursed in the Old Testament, is bringing him food and bread. It was crazy. And then all of a sudden, when the brook dried up, God told Elijah to go to the city of Zarephath, where he commanded a widow to sustain him. So Elijah went to the city, found a widow woman. First thing he said to her was, go and get some water, and while you're at it, bring something here for me to eat. And it's 1 Kings 17, 11. And it says, as the Lord thy God liveth, and this is the King James, I have not a cake, not a handful of meal in a barrel, a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may go eat it and die, 1 Kings 17, 12. Water was a really precious commodity back then because the drought was there. So the widow was willing enough to go get him some water, but when he asked for meal, she was like, we're gonna die, we only have a little bit left. I'm telling you, this is crazy. It says, for thus the Lord God said, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil Waste, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal will not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. First Kings 17, 14. The widow only had enough oil and flour for one meal, right? So she was going to go cook this thing and she was, gonna, and she was gonna be dead. It was her last meal. What a sorrowful way and a hopeless way to think. So Elijah comes in. I want you to picture this. Homeless person or someone comes in, it's, de it's like the worst situation ever and the, and, the, and the preacher says I want you to take your last meal and make it for me what would the Christian post have to say about that <laughs> selfish prophet gets widow's last meal how selfish can this be prosperity preacher and I want you to know that Elijah didn't do this so that like he could be labeled a prosperity preacher. Elijah did not care what other people thought. He cared what God said. Elijah is fed by ravens. Like, I mean, do you understand what Baal, do you know Baal was the God of, of rain? Baal was a God of rain. And Jezebel, right? Ahab, Jezebel. They went, he went to Ahab and Jezebel and said, because Baal's the God of rain, he said, it's not gonna rain until I say. And like, this is a big deal, man, because Jezebel wants him dead. Like, it's a wicked thing. So he like, he bails, and then he gets fed by ravens, and then he's like, go to the city. God says, go to the city. So he finds this one woman that has nothing. She has nothing. Nobody has anything. But he picked one that had nothing. And he said, make me a meal. Well, just make me a meal. She had to do something in her heart. She had to believe that she was going, something was going to happen here. See, the thing is, is the last meal is like the worst thing to ever ask anybody. I heard a person say the other day, I would take the last penny out of someone's hands just to show them the principles of giving, sowing, and reaping. Because what happened to this lady? When you look at it, what happened? As soon as she made that cake, her son goes back in and looks inside of that carafe, and she's got a full thing of flour and a full thing of oil. Would that have happened would it have happened unless she sowed? No, it wouldn't have. We've got to get this because this stuff's in there for us, man. I've got to know because we didn't have, we didn't. We lived in a 1978 single wide trailer and I kept us in there and it was a dump, dude. I mean, dump. We had a sewage leak understand, underneath of the basement. It smelled like poop. And we lived there, and, but we were content but we never prayed for anything. So this isn't about praying for anything. God doesn't want to give you so you have more stuff. God wants to give you so that money can be given to you so that it can flow through you so that it can further establish the kingdom. That's what he wants to do. And the more you give, you cannot give God. So the more we gave, the more God blessed us. The more he blessed us, the more we gave. 
So it's never, ever, ever been different. And until that thing stops, where you turn and it's all about you instead of giving, that's when the blessing stops. But the reality of this thing is, is that when you give, the blessing of the Lord will overtake you. And it is a big deal. Just like this woman who had nothing, she sowed into this man. It wasn't just like, you know, Jesus, do you know Jesus talked about money more than anybody in the Bible? The widow's, two, the widow's mites, she gave all she had. How many of you have struggled with the whole money thing? Some of you haven't. I need to know, like, who are you? Because biblical principles on giving are given to us so that we can become radical, generous, and we can further the gospel. We can see people transform, people saved, and people completely overwhelmed with God. And I'm telling you right now that if you sow into that principle right there, you watch and see what God does. Because he is wildly way more generous than you. Way more generous. Are you with me? It's, it's just so, it's like plowing ground, buddy. It's like kicking the earth, like, urgh, urgh. How many of you would like to be free in your finances? I'm talking free. Free. People hate this. How many of you are bothered right now because I'm talking about money? Raise your hand. Praise God. I'm glad. You should, at least I offended one. Is there anybody else? Because here's the deal. God, watch this. God offends the mind to reveal the heart. And it's not like your heart's bad. It's just there's stuff that we believe about God that's wrong. We just do. How many of you would like to see more people saved? How many of you would like to see more people transformed? How many of you would like to see, would like to see America come to Jesus? How many of you would like to see our school systems turn back to God? Do you think our president's going to do that? Sorry. It's not going to happen. You know what's going to do it? The gospel. I need you to understand that. Like we got the elections coming up. And I'm not saying vote for the wrong person. But I'm telling you that you can't put your trust in that. You have to put your trust in Jesus. And you have to put your trust in kingdom economy. And you have to put your trust in God's ways. Because his ways are greater than ours. And he wants to bless our socks off. Not so that you can flaunt it and show everybody I'm blessed but so that you can represent Jesus and be the most radical, generous giver. How many of you, if, if, if you could, would love to give more? Got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. All right. There's a way that you can give. So tonight we're going we're gonna to take an offering. I want, I, want you, I want you to believe God and trust God, and I want you to sow into this offering, believing that the principles of God in his word are real. I'm telling you, one of the greatest places of fear in the body of Christ is in the area of money. Why? Because we have more faith in our ability to make money than we do in God's ability to actually multiply. And we have put our trust in us. And some of us work very hard. And I, I get it. Working hard is amazing. But you're not just supposed to work hard to have an American dream. You're supposed to work hard to actually fulfill heaven's dream. And that is that all men would come to the knowledge of truth and know Jesus Christ. Amen? So when you're sowing into this offering, I want you to sow into purpose. I want you to believe God. And I'm telling you right now, trust him. He will show up like you've never seen. I could share testimony upon testimony about what he's done. God is good. Do you believe that? How many of you would like to be able to give more? Start somewhere. I'm telling you. Let me just pray for you. There's a QR code on the screen. And I think they have something you can fill out. I don't know. But this is amazing. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Was that too heavy for you? No. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. You don't understand. This has been a burden in my life. That I've, I'm like, don't want to share it because so many people accuse me of stuff. And the Lord just showed me, you're living under the fear of man. And I'm not afraid of people. But in this area I was. I'm not anymore. Why? Because my wife and I are radically generous and we radically give. We wouldn't be here if we didn't radically give and we weren't radically generous. Like, we wouldn't. Like, we, we dug wells for Heidi for four years straight. Two wells a month for four years straight. Like, like if, you, if you'd only understand, this is not, we are supposed to, we are supposed to be storehouses. That we can be radically generous. I want to I, I just, you can't outgive him. And the more you do, the more God shows up. Most of us don't trust him. Please don't allow your heart to have heard somebody preach something on 
on money to affect you when it comes to what the Bible says. Find out what the Bible says. Do yourself a word search and go through where is money mentioned in the Bible. You will find that it's everywhere in here and it's all about giving and it's all about being a person that God can trust to be a funnel to flow through. Amen? All right. How many of you want to give tonight? All right. Well, this preach almost worked. (laughs) I love you. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus, God. You said you love a cheerful giver not a grudging giver. You don't, wanna, you don't want people to give out of just, you just don't want people to give out of any other place but being cheerful. The only way you can be cheerful is believing that God will honor his word. Really. Father, I ask you to bless every cheerful giver. I ask you to overwhelm them. Show them who you really are, God. Because you are faithful, you are generous, and God so loved the world that he gave. God, we want to be just like you. We thank you. We sow this offering. We believe Jesus. We're taking unrighteous mammon. We're sowing this so it can turn into righteous mammon. God, we love you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No clap necessary. That was heavy. That was heavy. I feel it. It's heavy. Hey, listen. Here's the deal. We've got about 25 minutes left, and I have a very good friend that's in the house. I have... I have a man that actually is a CEO for Iris, for Heidi Baker's ministry. Will Hart is here. And I want Will to come up here and share his heart and burn for everyone. He's one of the most amazing men that I get to run with. And I want him to come up here and just bring you Jesus. Amen? Amen. And then we're going to, and that, we're going to, we're going to pray for the sick at the end. Just so you know, like we won't avoid that. We're going to do it. All right. Can you, can you just stay here for one second, Todd? Because that wasn't heavy. And I'm sorry, I, I don't preach on finance, but the entire time you were talking, I'm, I know you wouldn't want me to do this, many wells, many, many, many wells. Yeah. When my wife had cancer, yeah. you and Jackie stepped in. Yeah. The Bible says, blessed are the poor. <clears throat> Todd, Todd was with me in Mozambique once, and we sat in a mud hut in the dirt while a woman killed her last chicken and sat there and watched us eat it. She didn't even eat it. She didn't even eat it. She let us eat her last chicken. And for some of you guys, you have a hard time with that. And, And I want you to understand, like I do too. I'm a big, healthy boy. And she was hungry and her, and her grandchildren were sitting next to her. But the principle of giving. That really wrecked me that day. Bro, bro, <laughs> what I heard and what I heard was a father sharing with his kids a, a slice of wisdom. It's it's hypocrisy just to cry out for the gifts on his life, but not understand the foundation and principles that these two have paid. It's hypocrisy to sit here in a building that many had faith for and paid a price for and be like, eh, I don't like that message while you sit here. In Iris, and you know this, man, I don't shut up. Uh, no, but, dude. But I, 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 I brought you up to speak, so... I, don't shut up. I, I was so, I'm so stirred because as a father, I have a 16-year-old, yeah. right? And I have a 17-year-old and I have an 11-year-old. And for me, I always have a hard time talking about like sexuality with my kids. Like, you know, my dad was super awkward on my like 13th birthday. He's like, let's have the talk. And you know, like, I wish I had like the boldness that you have, but like, I, okay, I'm like, let's talk about this. But I realize, like, as a father, that's, like, legitimately some of the healthiest conversation I can have. And, I, and, 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 and now, even with finance, when I talk to my kids, when I share them truth, oh. it's like, it's the encouragement to see them run the race. Amen. It's not about the number. It's about don't just look at the foundations that you like that make sense. The foundation stones 
what you're hearing is more than just a give. No, no, no. We get to give. Yeah. We get to give. We do. But but what if you just have ears of offense, which I know you don't, but even I do, and I, I have to preach this. I will admit it. I have fear of preaching this as well. Sure. But the older I get as a father, that's all I want for my kids is for them to know the principles that have, that God has entrusted us with. But, bro, if, if God didn't show up financially for Iris, oh my how many bases do you have? We have 76 bases of today, and they fluctuate. How many churches does over Iris 5, have? Over 5,000 churches. How many orphans does Iris take? We've taken in over 8,000 over the years. So if, if God doesn't show up financially, none of those kids eat, none of those bases run. And so can you understand how the enemy would totally come at you? Be careful of sharing, of talking about finding. Be careful, of, be careful. Of. I, I need $30,000 a day to come in supernaturally to maintain. That's not built. Just to maintain. $30,000 a day to come in supernaturally. <laughs> Amen. And it's nothing for God. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. I, I, I once gave Reinhard Bonnke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> it was everything that my wife and I had. We <laughs> emptied it out because there was a, a crusade, <clears throat> and uh, part of it was any gift you give, you're going to get these three books. And I gave, and I waited a week, and then two weeks, and then three weeks, and then four. No books. They're expensive books, bro. They were. I'm no, just kidding. And do you want to know something? Like, I totally, I totally missed it. And I got upset. I even called the ministry and I said, hey, I gave. I need this in return. And they, I still didn't get them. <laughs> but it's so, okay, can I just be really honest? Like, I don't preach about this stuff either. But like, you, you stirred me up, man. I hope so. I don't. Because we do missions, right? So we're the poor ones. I think, I think if you look at things very simplistically, you, you can miss the heart of a father that's crying out saying, listen, run this race that's set before you. But don't just value the things that you think you need. Value the things that these guys have all walked in for years and it's crazy to sit in a place of faith that's been built with a radical tribe going after God and be like, oh, I only want the stuff that I want to hear. Take it all. Man, when you said we're, we're the poor ones, the missions, we're the missions yeah. people. This is something that I deal with in, in, our, in our missions right. community. And the, Bi the Bible says anybody who has left, what does a missionary do? They leave. They leave their family. They leave their homes. They leave everything and they go. I mean, how many people have you met that have left everything? Oh, we have over, just right today, we have over 500 missionaries. Yeah. The Bible says when you do that, you will be blessed. It doesn't say you'll just be blessed with poverty. It says you will be right. blessed. It says a hundredfold in this lifetime. In this lifetime with persecutions too. Yep. Persecutions come along with it. It's a big deal. Are you guys okay? Like, this is the weirdest encounter ever, right? No, this is me. As you were talking, a picture came in from my, from my wife and my son and two of our missionaries. This is Carolyn Figlioli. She's served in Sudan forever. Yeah. And that's uh, Antoinette. She's one of our missionaries. And it's a picture of my son ho holding $40 that he gave. As you were sharing this. <laughs> They, 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 they just giving. gave. He this just did just that. This just happened. This just happened as you're sharing. And they they gave it to go buy toys for our missionaries who just evacuated Haiti, like risked their life getting out. There's some of the last. They're actually the last missionaries I know that are getting out of Haiti. Right? There's some of the last ones in. And uh, and so as you're sharing, I get a picture uh, from my son who's giving <laughs> everything he has to serve the missionary. See, it's easy when you have nobody, if there was a mother up here with a baby, right? And, and, and that child needed surgery, all of you would run up here. 
Why? Because your heart connects with it. It's a heart, it's a heart pull. But do you just live a life? Like, like, like if somebody was dying, you would run up to them and preach the gospel. Like, I know you would. But will you do it as a lifestyle? Do you just preach the gospel? That's what I heard up here. Jesus, Jesus did. He spoke more about money than heaven and hell combined times two or three. He did. And this is something that I need to get, I, I was getting convicted on, man. And, I, and, I, and if I can just say this one thing, what I heard was a father giving you guys keys so you can run the, run the race. Amen. And, and, and I, I dare you to test him at my church, uh, Pastor Lyle Phillips, he, they run a program, which is literally, is, I dare you to believe in this, to believe <laughs> for this. They will hold your finance for like two, three months. And if you don't get fully returned, they give it all back. Wow. And in all the years they've done it, they've never had to do that. They've never given any, any finance back. No one's ever requested it back. Wow. There's a biblical principle yeah. of sowing and reaping. And I, I love that, Todd. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank Amen. you for sharing. It, it convicted me. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here convicted. I'm actually shaking inside. So give. Do what, what makes you think you're going to give your life away? Like, why? how do you come up here and go, God, I give you my life, and you don't have give w w what you've earned? Come on. Just even a fraction. Like, that's <laughs> insanity. Jesus. It's insanity. Freely you receive, now freely give. That's everything. And 10% is just the minimum. That's just the minimum. You can just give. Give and give and give and give. And give. Give everything. Why are you going to give your life if you won't even give what's in your pocket? Do you love him? Then feed his sheep. It's so simple. See, the principle of giving is more than finance. It's everything. And how can you give so freely? Because you're dead. It doesn't belong to us. You, you, you were dead, and then you became alive to live as a bond slave unto death. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Fear is faith in Satan. It elevates the lie. See, we've been blessed to get around generals, generals of the faith. You want to know something about Heidi? She, she's probably one of the most giving humans I've ever met. She is. She, she, Heidi, is this okay? Can I just talk for a minute? I, we only have 11 minutes, so I can't go in deep, but can I just share with you some behind the scenes stuff? Like, behind the scenes, this guy's been, th this incredible family, his ministry's been running with us for years. Running with Iris for years. Drilling wells. I don't know how many wells, I, I can call and find out. But I, I know it's well over 30. That gift pours out literal water so the people can drink. Be healthy. Be with their family. Do you know what that means? Like, I don't, I don't know if you get it. Like, and, and then I wish I could bring you all to our home and you can sit and see and watch. What that means is moms don't walk all day to go get water. They actually get to raise their kids. Like, I, it's more than just I give a thing and hopefully I get it back. It, it, what giving does is it affects everything. It changes family trees. And it doesn't belong to you anyway. You're just a steward. And yes, people have perverted this. But it doesn't change the principle. It doesn't change truth. You don't throw it, the baby out with the bathwater because there's some bad eggs. I don't know if that analogy works. There's a couple of things. Whenever you're in trouble, worship. Right? When all else fails, worship. When all else fails, what is worship? It's giving praise to the only one who should receive it. It's giving. It's hard for people to worship when things are tough. Do you know that? When it's hard? They, they, they try to control. They try to get answers. Just give. 
See, this, this whole thing is about giving away. Worship is giving. Never mind. Come on. <laughs> Do you love him? Are you sure? All of your heart? Nah, I don't believe you. All means all. All of your strength. Do you know that word strength is a physical word? Do you know that means when your head hits the pillow at night, you go, I poured it all out. Whew. Not because you did CrossFit, but because you lived your life fully unto him. When, when Todd and I were sitting there, and I've, and I've been blessed to sit in so many mud huts, and, it's, and it feels wrong to take, this is how I saw it, to take from the poor. Do you know that if you reject that, you, you are offensive at the core? There's nothing more offensive than you rejecting what somebody gives you. And that chicken has more value than you can imagine. It's their last protein. See, this is the issue. Even with giving like this, we try to justify it. And it's amazing because you're like, no, you take it, feed your grandchildren, feed your family. And there's, and there's 20 people staring at you. There's 10 kids playing in the corner of the hut. And they're just going. And you try to give it away. You try to. And think, no, 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 no. Please. The, the poor get it. The uneducated get this principle. So why, why at the church do we walk in so much shame? It's because where your treasure is, there's your heart. Where your heart is, there your treasure is as well. None of this belongs to you. None of it does. We just get to steward it. We've walked with generals. Heidi has a purse of cash. I've watched that woman give away hundreds of thousands of dollars in a moment. And it's so frustrating because I want to strategize. It has to make sense. That's my job. Are you with me? It has to make sense. And you watch. He has never failed us. Do you know in Iris, our culture, is this okay? I, guys are weird. You're getting like creepy. Nod. Good. Okay. In our culture, we're in, in, in Iris, and I have no problem with asking. I don't. I, I love it. But Heidi and Roland, just, they live in Iris. We, we're just not allowed to ask. We're not allowed to. That's just us in Iris, and I, I struggle with it. Because there's a biblical precedent for it. Paul did. It, multiple times. It's, it, but but it's, it's our culture. We, you guys have a culture. We have a culture. So it's our culture. So I need $30,000 a day to come in supernaturally. $30,000 a day to come to. Do you want to know where we get the most tension in the ministry and in leadership? It's over that. It's not over, it's not over war zones. The first thing people give up in their journey of faith is, I see it all the time, is their trust in finance. How many of you guys know who Jehovah Jireh is? My? Hello? My? Right? Do you know how many times Jaira is, is revealed in scripture? You know Jehovah Rapha? Who's Jehovah Rapha? Okay, right? Mentioned a ton of times in the scriptures. Do you know Jehovah Jaira, right? Do you know how many times Jaira is, really, is revealed in scripture? One time. One time. The amount of times we quote that for finance, it was never around finance. Jairo was revealed as a father in obedience was getting ready to sacrifice what he loved the most. It wasn't, it wasn't to buy you new tires. It wasn't to pay your cell phone bill. Jairo is only one time in the scriptures. In obedience. 
come on, if you love me, you'll obey what I command. In obedience, Jireh is revealed. And he brings a ram, a scapegoat. A scapegoat is provided. See, obedience and finance and giving your life away, they all go together. It's all together. It's all, everything is unto you. I give you everything. I hold nothing. I hold on to nothing. I give it all to you, and I trust you in obedience. Jireh is revealed. The provider was revealed in a moment that a father was willing to risk everything out of devotion for the Lord. See, the father pays the bills. That's what I do. I'm the father in my house. I pay the bills. He does that. But to move into a place of total reliance only comes out of obedience. And that's the hardest one. And, and, and if you are looking for a return, like I was with books, it ruins it. My heart was not in the right place. Wow, it is awkward up here, Todd. Which, which, which I want to encourage you. I always have an awkward conversations around certain things with my kids, but they need it. Why? Because I want them to run the race. I want them to be a good husband, a good wife. I want them to, be, I want them to run the race that's set before them. So don't take awkwardness for difficulty. No, sometimes it's the most awkward that is what's needed the most. Are you, are you alive? Oh my gosh, I have three minutes left. Here we go. <sighs> Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will open unto you. Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed to 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place he was about to go. He told them this, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Immediately, he says this, go, I'm sending you out. Like what? What? Like lambs amongst? I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. See, in everything he asks of us, it doesn't make sense in the natural. It has to be impossible. Impossibility is, is a requirement. Why? Because you have to have something impossible to believe for. That's what actually takes faith. If you can do it in your own strength. So what, is, what does Jesus say? And he says this to the 72 and he commissions them the same as the 12 basically. Go, I'm sending you out to the thing that's designed to kill you. I'm sending you out to the thing that's designed to kill you. That's what a wolf is. It's made to eat lambs. He says, that's where I'm sending you. And I love it. They, 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 Jesus is testing them to see if they're ready to go. It's easy to say yes in a crowd of 72. That doesn't take faith. It doesn't. Like, I mean, unless it's like your first time ever. Are you guys with me? God, I want to like come down there and tickle someone. <laughs> Hello. That doesn't take faith. It doesn't take faith, a lot of faith to run up here and be like, God, oh, yes, because you're surrounded by 72. You're surrounded by a bunch of people that are like, here I am, Lord. Choose me, right? Hello? Here's where it takes faith when you go. And here's what he says, and I love this. He, he, he says, go, I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. And then he gives a list. Are you guys, just two minutes. When you, I'm missing a little bit of this part of my Bible, so I'm going to try to abbreviate this. When you enter a house, he talks about like dust and feet. You know this? He says this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use your Bible because I want to read this. And mine's missing a chunk. 
The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Is this the King James? I love this. Pray the Lord of the harvest send out laborers into his harvest field. Go your way. Behold, I send you out like lambs amongst wolves. Carry neither monetary bag. Do you know why? Come on, let's, get, let's, let's keep, keep going. Carry neither a monetary bag, a knapsack or sandals, and greet no one along the road, unless you're part of lifestyle. Then you greet everyone. Okay? Don't worry. It was before lifestyle was created. Okay? Here we go. Take no monetary bag, knapsack, or sandals. Why? 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 What? What was uh, sandals? Transportation. Sandals was your return plane ticket home. That's what it was. Don't have an extra pair. That's how they got around. They got around with shoes. He was saying, don't have a return ticket. Don't have, you know, your backup car just in case. He says, you're not allowed to go with a backup plan. He says, he says, don't take sandals. Then he says, don't take a knapsack with you. What was a knapsack? It was all your belongings. They didn't have a lot of belongings. These people didn't have a lot. Why? Because they left everything and they followed him. So they're literally living as he's moving. They're moving with him. They didn't have a lot to begin with. That's why he would feed them because they were hungry because there wasn't a McDonald's ne next to them. They, they, they saw Jesus, this man, Jesus, he's moving. He's walking. I want to be with him. And they would drop everything and run. And they would just be with him. They didn't care. That's why he had to multiply food. Are, are you catching this because there was this raw hunger to be next to him to listen to him and then he tells the 72 and these are like the hungry ones this is the school of the day he says guys you're not allowed to take anything extra with you you can't take extra clothes you can't have a return plane ticket home and, and he says, don't take a purse, which was money. You can't even have extra finance with you. What is it when people do when they want to go into ministry? Okay, Lord, provide it. And that's a sign. Why? Because we want it all to make sense. We want it to make sense. And I get that. And in his goodness, from time to time, he, he makes it super clear. But honestly, in my life, I know, when, uh, I know when Todd, uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, but I bet when you saw this, you had faith, but you're like, I have no idea how this is going to happen. But here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. I'll do that. You have to have something impossible in your life to go after. You have to. Why? Because you were dead and now you're alive, and that's impossible outside of Christ. And so here's what we do. We try to normalize ministry. We try to do it like the world does it. We try to have it all make sense. It's not supposed to make sense. So Jesus doubles down as he sends out the 72. No purse, no bag, no sandals. Go. And don't greet anyone there. He wasn't saying be mean. He was just saying you are focused. You need to focus. One mind, one heart. I'm going after the calling. I'm not going after just being the friendliest person. I have a call and a destiny right now. You're amazing, by the way. Come on, single focus. And so the reason why no purse, no bag, no sandals is there was nothing that could distract them. And then he paints a picture of church planning. Find the man of peace. Who is the man of peace? You guys might not like this, but this is my opinion. And I got uh, historical records to back up my opinion. The man of peace, 100% they weren't poor. They weren't. The man of peace in the city, what the man of peace was, somebody well-known, somebody of influence in the city. So, this is what they're saying. Find that man of peace that actually carries authority in a city. Find them, preach the gospel. If they don't want it, go to the next one. Why? Time is short. 
Find the man of peace in the city. Find someone. Come on, this is church planting. This is the early church. This is how the gospel exploded globally. And you're all sitting here because of this. Find, find the man of peace, somebody that has authority in a town, that carries peace. And meet them. The Bible says, the 72 return rejoicing. Hey, come on. They return rejoicing and say, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Oh my God. It's not an image of, oh Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. No, no, no. Their, their mind is blown. It's blown. Oh my goodness. Even the demons submitted to us in your name. Why? Because they were obedient. They were focused on him. Nothing could hold them back. See, authority comes not just because you say it, but you walk it, you live it. Come on, stay with me. They, you gotta walk in this thing. And Jesus draws lines. He goes, now is the time, this is what I need you to do. It's not a time to get offended at the harshness of what I'm telling you. It's not a time, no, no, no. I'm telling you to go and you need to be entirely dependent on me. And as you go, I'm gonna send you the thing that's designed to kill you. If you have a hard time with a message about finance, what makes you think you can carry a message? Come on, like stay with me. Even Jesus said money is not what you need right now. You need obedience. I'm gonna provide. That's what he's telling them. I'm gonna take you, I will feed you. I will feed you. I will feed you. I will feed you is what he's telling you. I will take care of you. Listen, the 72 return rejoicing, why? Because he backed up what he said and he did more. He didn't say, go, I'm sending out like lambs amongst wolves and, and demons will submit to us in your name, in my name. Th there was more than what they even expected. There was more, stay with me. There was more. And Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all of the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm you. Nothing shall harm you. We had four pastors killed two weeks ago. 14 churches burned down. Two of our pastor's wives kidnapped. They're being abused right now probably. I'm not saying that to shock you, I'm saying that because this is a reality. This is just two weeks ago. Stay with me. Don't shift just because you hear something that's happening today. Read this, it's all throughout here. Paul, don't shift just because it's happening today. I sat with, with four of our pastors and they told me the most horrific, the most horrific. I've been doing this 24 years and I had never heard anything like this. I've traveled all over the world. I've rescued kids out of prostitution. I've seen things that I can never unsee. And first time ever, I've vomited as they're sharing their stories with me. I'd never heard anything like that. And we're going around the table and they're sharing. Their family's been killed. The, the most horrific, I won't go into it. Cannibalism. And at the end, at the end of it all, they worshiped. And there was nothing more offensive than that for me.
Why am I sharing this? Obedience is more than just hearing a difficult message and saying amen or saying yes at the altar. Obedience is when it doesn't make sense. And they worshiped. And they danced. And I grabbed one of the pastors. I said, I know that this is real and I love Jesus, but I do not love him as much as you do. I said, give me a verse. Give me a verse, tell me a verse. And he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he, and he said, look, we just ate chicken, Will. We just ate chicken a week ago. I was running for my life. And in the back of my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm going, but your wife is dead. Your children are dead. He says, but look, look at what I have. Look at his provision. Look at his provision. And I realized in this moment that I didn't love him as much as I thought I did. When you hold on and it has to make sense, instead of living in the simplicity of this life does not belong to me. I saw Satan fall like him lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm you. And they're harmed. His wife, their kids, they're harmed. a liar? Is Jesus a liar? Come on, this is the struggle that we have. I don't understand. So I'm not going to enter in. Is Jesus a liar? Does he lie about finance? Does he lie about laying your life down? Does he lie about loving your neighbor? Does he lie about healing? No, 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 no. This life, it doesn't belong to you. Nothing can harm you when the worst thing they can do is send you to be with him. Nothing can harm you. The issue is, how, how can you be harmed if the worst they can do is send you to be with him? How can you worship in the midst of everything you know and love falling apart around you? Because the worst they can do is send you to be with him. The worst thing that they can do is send the children to be with him. That's the worst thing. to and Jesus goes to the boy with the loaves and fishes and he says that's perfect this is what I have it might look small but your life what are you holding on to
Colby, my buddy, he was just in Brazil. Grenade, they, they pulled a grenade and stuck it in his car. Pulled guns on him. We get to do this. So give your life, give everything. Don't worry about sandals. Don't worry about knapsacks. Worry about obedience. Is there anybody hungry here tonight? If you are, just stand to your feet. their ball with my face off just give him everything don't exclude anything everything is his are you with me everything I want to pray for the sick and I want to pray for a fresh commitment in your heart to give him everything look this life is not set up for you it's set up to destroy you but you can tell life you're not destroyed you're not forsaken because Jesus will never forsake you and he'd never destroy you. He wants you to destroy the destroyer. Are you with me? Are you with me? This is a big deal. This is, this is laying down everything. This is, God, I want you to use me. I want you to use this life that you gave me. I, I don't want to live it for me. I want to live it for you. I want everything about my life to be completely yielded to you. I want to know what you think about me so I can tell other people what you think about them. I want to lay my life down. I'm not afraid. Listen, if you're born again, you're never going to die. Jesus said, he who lives and believes in me will never die. Come on, I have the resurrection and life. He who lives and believes in me will never die. Yes, we're going to put off the tent, but you'll just, <gasps> right away, you'll be with him. Think about it. You die, <laughs> oh, you're right there, you're with Jesus. I'm telling you, there's this, <laughs> just like that. Death shouldn't be a fear of yours. Living your life out loud for Jesus shouldn't be a fear of yours. I want us to burn. I want, I want the body of Christ to step into full surrender, fully. God, here's my life. Use it as you will. I am yielding everything. Finances are a part of it. Your life is everything. Don't let finances be your God. Let God be God. Are you with me? Don't let money control you. Money is an amazing servant, but a terrible master. Don't let it master you. You, ah, okay. If you're sick, if you need prayer for healing, if you need healing in your physical body, if you need healing here in your mind, right? Talk about depression, anxiety, fear, all that stuff. You need prayer for that. You need physical prayer for your body. I want you to raise your hand right now. Just put your hand up. Keep it up. Here at Lifestyle, we, we pray for each other. We're the body of Christ. It's not about Christ in Todd or Christ in Will. It's about Christ in us, the hope of glory. We want to believe God together that every one of us would be healed. Are you with me? Keep your hand up. I want people all over the room that see hands that are raised. I want you to gather around them right now because we're going to lay hands on the sick. And we're going to believe Jesus for full recovery. And, and look, right before we do this, gosh, right before we do this, if you know that your life has not been in a place of surrender to God, and you haven't surrendered, and you're still, this, this whole thing of living for you is a, is a big struggle, I want you to come down here before we pray. If that's you, and you need to be down here, I want you to come down to the altar right now. Trust me. We're going to still pray for the sick. Just, we got to do this first. First things first. You are, you are saying, I want a fresh commitment to the Lord. I'm going after this thing, and I'm not letting anything hold me back. 
It's good to see you. I love you. Fresh commitment to Jesus. Fresh commitment to the Lord. Not holding anything back. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. I don't want to live my life for me. I want to live my life out loud for you. I want to give you my everything. Everything. I want to sell out everything. I want to give everything to you. I do not want to live for me anymore. Some of you are called to mission. Some of you are, are called to business. Some of you are called to all different places. I'm telling you, it all, God can only use you when you sell out everything and you give Him everything. Amen. He's got you, bud. We're still going to pray for the sick. I'm sorry for getting this backwards. As soon as I said that, the Holy Spirit said, hey, there are people here that need a fresh surrender. They're pricked to the heart. Let them express their, their hearts. So anybody else that needs to be up here? People say, well, God can see me right where I'm at. I get it. There's something about taking a step. Something about taking a step saying, you know what? I don't care who sees me. I'm I'm done. Will, will you do me a favor? Will you pray with these? No, no. Pray with them with your mic, bro. Because they're all up here. It's just going to jump in. <laughs> I know. I just want to get hands on people. Back. I won't. Okay. Just, all of you, just lift your hands to the king. Yeah. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, I ask for a release of your anointing. Lord, I ask that it would be more than just another altar call. Lord, I ask that you would pour out your radical love, God, over each and every one of them, Lord. That you would draw so near in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, as they they lay their lives on the altar today, tonight, God, Lord, would you take all of them, I break every lie from the pit of hell that says you cannot, you will not, in Jesus' name. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask God that you would break us, God. Break us, God. Break them for the poor and the sick and the needy, God. That they would give their lives away as a sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto you. So Holy Spirit, come, come, come in the name of Jesus. Come. Come, Father, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord. I ask for a release of your anointing, God. And I ask that you would baptize them with love, God. And I ask that you would baptize them with fire tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that their hearts would burn for nothing but you. Nothing but your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I break fear. In the name of Jesus. I break fear of man. I break fear of failure in the name of Jesus. And Lord, Lord, I ask God that you would, as they go all in, God, that you would go all in even more than what they've experienced before, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you right here, Jesus. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for your grace, God. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we give you permission right now. Every part of us yielded, God. We thank you, Father. You're our one thing. You're our one thing, God. Jesus, 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 more Holy Spirit, we ask you for more right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, come, right now, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, I heard the words hope, hope restored, hope restored, Hope restored. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
you, Lord. Hope restored. Hope restored. Jesus' name. Hope restored. if you have sickness in your body that needs to leave right now I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt you guys can keep going I want people to gather around everyone that has their hands up sorry to do it the second time I just this was important these ones this one right here we want healing to happen right now physical healing in this place how many of you believe that God is a God of miracles he is a God of miracles I want I want some a couple of LCU students to come up here and surround this one right here, please. Do you need prayer for healing? Do you need prayer for healing? It's okay. <laughs> no, you're okay. All right, I want, you to, I want you to pray for the person that you're in front of. I want you to say this with me right now. Anthony, I want you to pray for him. I want you to say this right now, in the name of Jesus, we command depression. We command suicidal thoughts. We command hopelessness. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak to it right now. And we command it to leave. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for healing over sleeping disorders. God's healing you of sleeping. He's taking away your nighttime that is trauma. He's taking it away, completely clearing it. Sleeping disorders be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, I want you to speak to these mountains. Sleeping disorders be healed in Jesus' name. We speak life to you. No more anxiety in Jesus' name. We speak peace in Jesus' name. We speak healing and wholeness over you. I want you to say this with me. Neck be healed in Jesus' name. Neck be healed in Jesus' name. Shoulders be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every disc be made whole in the name of Jesus. Come on, guys, pray with me. Back be healed in Jesus' name. Organs be healed in Jesus' name right now. Every organ, heart be healed, lungs be healed, kidneys be healed. Liver be healed. Every digestive disorder get out in Jesus' name right now. We thank you for wholeness. Pancreas be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes, we command you get out in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for every bit of neuropathy in the feet or in the hands in Jesus' name. We break the power of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Circulation be restored in Jesus' name. We thank you for wholeness right now, healing and wholeness. In the mighty name of Jesus, healing and wholeness. Blood disorders be healed in Jesus' name right now. Every blood disorder, you be healed right now. In Jesus' name. 
wholeness and healing right now. God, we thank you for absolute health. Ears be open in Jesus' name. We speak healing over ears, over hearing disorders, over hearing loss, over deafness in Jesus' name. Brain be healed in Jesus' name. Brain fog be lifted in Jesus' name. Alzheimer's be healed in Jesus' name. Parkinson's be healed in Jesus' name right now. We thank you for every tremor disappearing in the mighty name of Jesus right now. You are the God of miracles, God. You are the healer. We believe that you are the healer. Father, thank you for healing and wholeness, God. I thank you for eyes seeing, just like that testimony, that her eyes were healed. I thank you for seeing in Jesus' name. I thank you for eyes being healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Night terrors are being healed right now. You are being set free from night terrors, from evil dreams that the enemy has tried to pollute your sleep, has been, he's been destroying your sleep patterns. In the name of Jesus, be restored, be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Cancer, we curse you and command you, get out of these bodies right now. Every cancer cell, we command you go in Jesus' name. Come on, guys. Cancer, we rebuke and command you leave these bodies in Jesus' name. You will live and not die. You will live and not die in Jesus' name. Come on, have faith, speak to the mountain. Be removed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. Kidney stones be removed now in Jesus' name. Hepatitis C, we bind you and break your power by the blood of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that stains from a life we wish we'd never live, all those stains that are in our body from a life that we don't live anymore, those stains must be removed right now in Jesus' name. STDs, get out in Jesus' name. Sexually transmitted diseases, get out in Jesus' name. Track marks be removed in Jesus' name. Cutting scars disappear in the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches get out in Jesus' name. Pituitary gland be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. No more issues. Father, I thank you. You are the God of miracles. Is he not the God of miracles? Is God not the God of miracles? Let's believe God for miracles right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. From the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, we thank you for absolute health, absolute healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody in here, at their home, they believe that there are demons in their house. We break the power of the demonic realm. We claim the blood of Jesus over your home. We claim the blood of Jesus over your children. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of God upon our house. That, Lord God, there is no devil that's allowed to enter our domain. Father, thank you. The blood of Jesus on the doorpost, completely, completely removing every entity that shouldn't be there. You will go home to a house of peace. You will not go home to a house of strife. In the name of Jesus, we break the power of the devil right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for prodigals coming home. I thank you for children being on fire with Jesus once again. I thank you for the return of prodigal sons and prodigal daughters in Jesus' name. 
I thank you for the return of parents that have walked away because of religion. They've walked away because they've been hurt. They've walked away because they've seen something weird. They've seen something twisted. God, I thank you for radical freedom. Holy Spirit, touch their soul right now in Jesus' name. Touch their soul right where they're at in Jesus' name. I thank you for phone calls this week of parents and of prodigal kids that have returned to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Say, how can you speak that way? Faith speaks that way. Faith believes that with God, all things are possible. And faith believes that all things are possible to him who believes. Guys, are we believers? Come on, it's time that we encounter Jesus so that we can encounter people. Come on. Just everybody, I want everybody to put their hand on somebody right now. Come on, on their shoulder, be fine.